What's up, people? It's 804, King of Phones and Jays, the Polo Prince. I uh, just want to do a quick video on some accessories that I've picked up. Um, helps out with, you know, if you're a sneakerhead and you're into sneakers, you know. Some of these things uh, help you keep your gear intact. No music today. Well, it just didn't feel like it, you know. So, just came straight off the top. Um... All right, the first thing I can show you, which will be real quick. A lot of guys, you got gear, you got hats and stuff. Um, you know, your hats get dirty, dusty, things like that. I ordered, which actually came as a pair, and the kit was an actual, uh, this is an actual hat stretcher. This hat, all my hats are uh, seven and three eighths. Um, this hat came... And it fit like a seven and a quarter hat. It, I could get it on my head and everything, but it was just a little snug. And, you know, if I wore it for any extended period of time, you know, they could give you a headache and all that other stuff. So what I did is I went out and bought a hat stretcher. What you do is you put this actually inside the actual hat and you twist this bar and these two pieces spread out. And it actually puts tension on the actual hat. I know those other methods. I looked on eBay where you can take the hat and pull it over your knee and pull the hat. And there's a band in here that actually you can pop and pull that. And it'll actually keep your hat, you know, looser. But I've heard of people doing that and the hat coming apart here. Or it's splitting the seams or something like that. So with this method... You just crank it until, you know, it gets relatively tight. And I'm sure if I over-tighten this or over-stretch this, this would probably bust the hat as well. But this is a little more easier method. And you can keep the hat in this. Let's just say you knew you what, what fit you were going to wear the next day. You could put this in your hat, stretch your hat out, and, you know... Then when you remove this and go to wear your hat, your hat's good. But the other method, if you're just pulling it and pulling it and pulling it, you know, it might loosen up a little bit, but, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to stay loose as long as if you actually uh, kept this constant pressure on this for an extended period of time. I don't know, overnight or something like that. Similar to the shoe stretchers that I actually have that um, I actually use in some of my shoes when I put them on for the very first time, you know, to kind of stretch them out because, you know, some shoes are kind of, tight when you first get them so that's one little pickup that i got uh, put that over here the second thing um and shout out to big hurt um also shout out to mr Mitos. i watched his video on getting the technique but i was talking to big hurt about it and he's the one who kind of talked me into actually going ahead and starting this to make shoe protectors for my shoes um and I ordered this stuff. It's uh, 3M vinyl covering um, from some place called Easy Auto Wrap. Uh, it's on YouTube, and it's like 20 bucks for, I believe, 10 feet by 12 inches of this vinyl covering. And came in this little box. Um... And if you're going to be doing that, you're going to need a pair of scissors. You're also going to need a an X-Acto knife to cut out the trim around the actual, uh, once you um, do a little tracing around your shoe, and I'll show you my tracing. Y'all know I'm Team Bigfoot, so joke if you want. Trace, this is the one I did for my phone posits. So, did a little tracing, and this is the heat gun you're going to need to heat up the vinyl wrap, and this is the actual piece of cardboard I used to, once I laid the vinyl piece out, I put this on and then traced around the vinyl, I mean traced around the cutout, and then cut the actual, you can cut it out with a pair of scissors, or you can use an X-Acto knife and score it all the way around. And then you can cut it out with the scissors. Or if you score deep enough with the X-Acto knife, then the vinyl piece will just break out and you'll just be left with this portion. And 
The vinyl portion, let me show you what it looks like after you put that on the shoe. Because I've done, I think, four pairs of shoes so far. I've done my... Let's see. I've done my Pantone 7s. And here they are. The edges are smooth and everything around. Because that's when the heat gun really comes in. Once you put that heat gun on it, it makes this vinyl kind of suck down to the shoe. So these are my Pantone 7s. I've done those. Uh, let's see what else I've got. I've done... I've done my Weatherman's. Looks pretty good. I mean, it's really smooth on there. I mean, it's just, it just, it adheres to it. Once you put that heat gun on it, it just shrinks down onto the shoe. And it, it's not going anywhere. But for those of you who are thinking, well, what if, I mean, how is that going to be, you know, for, for grip and blah, blah, blah. Just hold tight. I got you covered. Hold tight. I got you covered. Uh, let's see what other pair I've done. I've done the... Yep. I've done my Dr. Dooms as well. As you can see. Like no edges hanging off or nothing like that. And like I said, once you put that heat gun on them, it just... It just, it's like, it's it's kind of sticky anyway, the bottom of it, the underneath it, the head to the shoe. But once you put that heat gun to it, it just, if anybody knows about, you know, heat wrapping, I mean, shrink wrapping and heat guns, when <clears throat> heat's applied to things, it shrinks it down and that gives it its adhering quality. Oh, what other shoe I've done? I think I've done, yeah, okay. And I did my, uh, my Purple Rain's. This was the very first one I actually did. So I did these as well. And you can see it's just, it's it's stick to it. It's, you know, now, you're going to say, sorry about that. It's slick. Yeah, it is slick. Okay. Got you covered. Got you covered. This is why I'm going to show you the last part, which I'm actually in the process of waiting for something to get delivered that would help with the non-sticky portion of that, uh, or the grip portion of that, um, of the process. It's this stuff called Grit Traction Tape. It's actually called in here Anti-Slip Tape. Now, if you can see, this is a 60 foot roll, two inches wide. Now, what I actually ordered was a hole punch that will cut out about a circular size, maybe a quarter size hole. We'll cut out of that. And then I'll take those and maybe, I don't know, maybe nine, ten of them and place them strategically along the bottom of the shoe to give the shoe that grip. So it won't just be straight vinyl on any surface like a linoleum floor or carpet or anything of that. This is what's gonna give your actual shoe grip. So it's just an easy way, especially if you guys are in the foams or some of those J's with the icy blue bottoms. If you don't wanna be constantly cleaning your soles, you can just, and this stuff is relatively inexpensive. This roll of 60 foot was like, 35 bucks, 60 feet. I won't use this. I won't have enough shoes to use this all on. Like I said, if I cut 10 of these out per shoe, I mean, it's, trust me, this, this is going to last a long time. It's 60 feet. Now that 10 feet of that 3M roll, I ran through that already. I've already reordered some more. I did one, two, three, four. Did I do any more? I've only done I think four or five. I think I may. I might. I think I might have done another pair. I can't remember. Yeah, I've even done four or five pair. I think I did five pair of shoes. So I actually had to order some more of that. I ordered like another four rolls for the time being. That'll get me through to uh, go ahead and uh, get those protectors on there so I can 
stop worrying about cleaning shoes. And this was all brought about because I tried to clean some shoes that I was a little slow on keeping the upkeep on and soles got a little dirty and you know the the the, the mag I mean the sole saw stuff you know it works but you just have to use multiple applications and I just said on some of my shoes that I hadn't worn I'm just gonna go the protector route and I'm not gonna buy a shoe protector that is they're like twenty five dollars a pop for one pair. I'm like that's ridiculous. But you know we're sneakerheads, and you know sometimes that people can charge prices for things and get over on us. But once I started reading um, and looking at some of the videos of do-it-yourself uh, shoe protectors and how easy it was, and and I tried it and it worked. I mean it's it's simple. I'm, I'm actually turning on a couple of other people to uh, try and do that as well. So like I said, man, this was about thirty-five bucks. You know, pair of scissors, a Zacto knife. Heat gun, oh the heat gun. Oh, the, heat gun. the heat gun, it was like twenty bucks at Lowe's or Home Depot. I think they both sell the exact same one. And the three M roll, like I said, I bought that for like under twenty bucks because I think if you buy two, then you get like ten percent off the order or something like that. So it's relatively cheap, especially to keep your, your your kicks clean. If if you're even concerned with the bottom of your sneaks, some people aren't, you know. But those of us who wear foams know once they get that. That pissy yellow color is, you know, it's it's not attractive. You know, it just, it looks like you've been stepping in piss, but, you know, it's just regular dirt and wear and tear, but still, it just, it's not, it's not attractive look. So, this is just a little, um, a little, uh, accessories video on some things that, you know, some sneaker heads might need and did not know of, and if I could bring that to you, then thumbs up. Once again, it's your boy, 804, King of Foams and Jays, the Polo Prince. And I'm out. Peace.